Russia's defense ministry says it has successfully completed a test of a new intercontinental ballistic missile. The launch took place in northwestern Russia, close to the Finnish border. It hit its target in the Kamchatka Peninsula, its east of Japan. Called the Sarmat, the long-range weapon has been in development for several years. Russian officials say it can defeat existing missile defense systems. U.S. defense officials said Russia gave advanced warning of the test and did not consider it a threat to the United States. Russian President Vladimir Putin, however, framed the test as a warning. This truly unique weapon will enhance the military potential of our armed forces. It will reliably provide security for Russia from external threats and will make those who, in the heat of frantic aggressive rhetoric, try to threaten our country think twice. For more on this, let's uh, bring in Frank Ledwich. He's a former military intelligence officer and now lectures in military capabilities and strategy at the University of Portsmouth. Uh, Frank, what do we know about this missile? Should we be worried? No, not really. We, analysts have been waiting for this vehicle, this rocket, to be tested for about a year. It's part of a decade-long program to replace what NATO calls the Satan missile, which, by the way, was made in Dnipro in, uh, in Ukraine in the early 90s, late 80s, early 90s. So we're looking for a replacement for it. This is it. It was tested yesterday. Nothing particularly to worry about. Of course, it's likely to be and was accompanied by the expected saber rattling, but it's uh, it's really nothing particularly out of the ordinary. Um, there's been a lot of speculation as to whether Moscow might turn to tactical nuclear weapons. This uh, is an intercontinental uh, strategic uh, missile, but what does it say about the nuclear threat? Well, it has to be said that there is a nuclear threat arising from Ukraine. It's different in scale from that presented by the, the new missile that was tested yesterday. And it is a serious threat. We speak a lot, don't we, about chemical weapons, which is a weapon of mass destruction technically, but it really isn't. It's, it's, it's a relatively low rate of casualties. But a nuclear weapon, of course, is entirely different. And nuclear, the use of tactical nuclear weapons is present in Russian military doctrine particularly in breakthrough battles of the kind we're seeing now in Ukraine. Now, I don't think it's likely that they will use such a weapon, but it does exist in their doctrine. If humiliation, if the, if the Ukrainians throw back the Russians and they're facing humiliation and defeat, that will be an option. However, NATO has been playing a really quite clever game over the last week anyway over this. They have been adopting an attitude of what's called constructive ambiguity, They've made it very clear that there will be serious consequences, but have been left unclear what those consequences will be. And they have plenty of arrows in their quiver to be able to deter this if it occurs. Mm -hmm. I think it's very unlikely it will, by the way. Now, the White House uh, did not seem to be too fussed about this uh, test, uh, saying that they had been given advance notifications. What does that tell you? It simply confirms that this was an expected test. As I said, it, this is a decade-long program to, to replace an old system. The Americans are conducting similar replacement exercises. Interestingly, I think it was two weeks ago, the Americans postponed a similar test or a test of a similar kind of missile, an intercontinental uh, ballistic missile, so as to avoid any sense of escalation uh, in this context. Of course, that's not the approach Russia takes. So, no, the Pentagon won't be particularly worried about this. They'll have been watching it for a long time. They're expecting it. It happened. It succeeded in, in, in so far as it was supposed to. And development will continue in Russia as it will in America. Now, Frank, it's uh, day three of what's considered uh, Russia's new offensive in eastern Ukraine. What stands out to you compared to the last two months of fighting? Well, first of all, what we're seeing now is Second World War style entrenchment battles <clears throat> and encirclement or attempts by Russian forces to encircle Ukrainian forces, particularly in the Severo Donetsk region. Now, that's in the, far in the south, southeast. There's a salient there, which is a bulge into Russian occupied territory. And what the Russians are trying to do is cut off Ukrainian forces in there. It's a grinding battle. I don't think the Russians are ready for it. They're feeding people in piecemeal. 
Yesterday, Ukrainian intelligence, which I found quite interesting, said that they killed between 25 and 30 Libyan and Syrian mercenaries, which says something about the manning situation of the Russians. They are clearly on a, a deadline, on a timeline. Otherwise, they would not have conducted this attack at this time. They have made some gains, as your reporter said earlier. What interests me, however, in the north around Kharkiv, or what now represents the north, the, the Russians are desperately trying to retake ground the Ukrainians took last week. So this is a grinding struggle. It's going on as we speak. Many people are being killed, and the Russians seek a breakthrough. They have not made a breakthrough. The area we're talking about is actually composed quite largely of many towns, and that will, in those areas, Ukrainian forces will be able to leverage their advantages. But we haven't got to that point yet. They're fighting on the edges of Sverdonetsk. Russians claim to have taken a couple of small towns. This war and this battle will go on now for several weeks. Frank Ledwich, there, former military, inter military intelligence officer. Thank you very much, Frank. Thank you, Gerhard.